Welcome back to our special edition for Better Decisions, a podcast that covers the South Florida market. And actually today we're going to be discussing the whole country because we're at the event with the very best agents from around the country who are going to talk and contemplate on what's been happening in their markets for the last year. So my first guest I have on here, thank you. This is Kirsten Jordan. And obviously, you'll know Kirsten, you'll recognize her from Million Dollar Listing New yeah. York. And Kirsten, you've been in the business for as long as I've been in the business. Yeah. Um, and you handle New York. I do. Uh, you have a team. I do. Um, introduce yourself to everyone yes. and then we'll kind of get into it. So my name is Kirsten Jordan. I have a team called the Kirsten Jordan Team, very original name. I've been at Douglas Solomon, back at Douglas Solomon for three years. And I was at Douglas Solomon before for eight. So I've, from, in my 15-year career, I've mostly been here. And um, I, we work in Manhattan, we work in Long Island City, we work in Brooklyn. Um, I have my Connecticut license and you know, we, we're hoping to get our Florida license and maybe dabble at some point just for the fun of it down here. But mostly we are up in New York and, um, and I have a team of 10 people, a couple, couple support staff and, and I think you know, seven agents. And it's been a great year for us up there, I have to say. Perfect. Well, I want to hear about that. And what we want to share with everyone is understanding what's been going on in New York for 2023. Take us through it. Like, how has your year been? So, well, 2023 has been super interesting because of the fact that it's been less, you know, we've had less transactions in 2023 than we had in 2022 and less than 2021. 2021 was a really, really big year for real estate in the beginning of 2022 um, in, in, in Manhattan. We had like just tons of transactions because there was a lot of pent up demand. Um, if you remember during COVID, in New York, we were not allowed to transact for several weeks. And then, yeah. you know, the city itself really was shut down for another couple of months afterwards. It wasn't until June that we reopened and were allowed to start selling again. And then it really just, things didn't pick up again until the end of the year of 2020. So f basically we had this incredible, you know, major, I think it was like, I don't know, billions and billions of dollars more than we were even expecting. And then as interest rates started to come up in the beginning mm -hmm. of 2022 and now where we are, we, we just saw a lot of really a slowdown in, in transactions and the amount of inventory didn't rise at the same time as transactions were slowing because people didn't want to put their homes on the market. They didn't feel like they would get good pricing because of the fact that the press was talking about how terrible the market was becoming. And, and then of course they have low rates and so they don't want to move because they don't want to buy with the new, with the new interest rates. And so we experienced a year with less, less activity. My team did outperform the market. However, it's not been easy for sure. You know, it's been really focusing on building rapport with the existing clients that we have, doing deals that are difficult deals, having difficult conversations, having them again, and then really focusing on what it takes to what it takes to market our properties, but more importantly what it what it takes to really get the buyers to the table and keep them at the table. Because like we were talking about before, it's a, it's a time when, when buyers, when buyers want to feel like they, they got something. They win. Yeah, we were reflecting on this before the camera started rolling. Yeah. And it was interesting to see that New York psychology right now is the market soft. It's a, as you said, it's definitely a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. So the buyers have the upper hand or perceived yes. to have the upper hand. Sales are down. Right. Inventory seems to be creeping up a little bit. Yeah. Has prices changed? Would you say dollar per square foot's kind of gone up or down, or is it just kind of flat? So the thing with New York is it's very, very hard to talk generally about price per square foot because there's averages and then there's median, but our product varies so much yeah. because we have co-op product, which is worth as much as 50% less mm. than like condo product and then and on a per square foot basis. And then you have extremely high-end condo product that is located in top locations that no matter what you do, it will always sell and it sells at a premium. And what numbers and are they? Because talking can be, about that can like be the top of the future. That could be 2,500 a foot to four, five, ten thousand dollars a foot. So the top end, I'm thinking like two twenty Central Park West. Exactly, ten thousand like a foot. Okay, more, so that's ten thousand like a square foot. And in terms of like the buying profile, who's buying right now? Is it is it just business as usual? Is it families? Is it is it couples? Is there any kind of demographic profile that you can... Well, the, it really depends on the product because the really, really high-end product that comes on just because of the fact that the seller says, listen, if I get the right number, I'm going to sell it. That is the super billionaire that says, we're trading baseball cards. This is a trophy asset. I just mm. want one, right? Yeah. That's the, those, are the, those are the buyers there. For example, let's talk about Gary Barnett's, um, you know, Extel project that's, you know, the Central Park Towers. 
Central Park Towers, those those homes trading around five thousand, six thousand dollars a square foot net in with all of the all of the fees and all the discounts that he was giving to these to these buyers. The, that is a relative discount. However, it's still five thousand dollars a foot. Yeah, it's right. Not cheap. So it's not cheap. So and and people were thinking of those as deals because of the fact that they're getting a full floor, they get these incredible views. He has an inventory loan. He wants to, you know, close out extra units at some given time. He does those deals, right? Whereas then you look at co-op product on Park Avenue, if it needs renovation, you can't give it away. Yeah. Yeah. It, we had the same thing in Miami. It, we have an right. older product which is now actually getting in because of the way the climate's working. You know, they're going through assessments and there's other issues. Yes. But the new product, and again, we have obviously just, I say like New York, but we have very different classes of product, condos and houses, and it varies obviously in level. Our top end market's about 6,000 a square foot at the very yes, high end. Exactly. Um, but when we're talking about the new new product, South Florida, we've reflected on this in, in previous podcasts, there's only 6,400 new units being introduced into our system over the next three or four years. Um, how is New York when it comes to new product, like brand new product? Is it, is it hard to get hold of or is there you know, a good amount of uh, that product out there available for buyers? So the, the timeline and the way that we do development in New York City is very different than down here. First of all, just from the basic sense that when buyers put down a deposit, the developer can't use the deposit funds to be able to start with construction, which is different than Florida. So if a developer is going to do pre-development, have pre-construction purchases, or people come in and take a look at the model unit and they buy something before it's gonna be built for a couple of years, they sign that contract, they put their deposit down, and then the, the developer still has to find his own money to build the project. So we are in a phase right now where land doesn't make sense for developers. They don't wanna buy because there's literally no financial sense because the commercial loans are even higher than the 7% mortgage rates that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Yep. So the, the product that exists is the product that there's, we will be selling. There's not a whole new slurry there's of not new a whole, coming on the pipeline. There's not a whole bunch of stuff of, that's yeah. coming on. And if and it, right now, what's available is product that developers need to get off their books because of the fact that it's finished and all it is is costing them extra interest and so they want to get it sold. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other product which is basically that in-between that's probably being finished out right now. But there's a lot of stagnant product in certain neighborhoods that is still having a little bit of trouble selling. And that's not the top neighborhoods. Yeah. Like we're not talking about the Upper East Side. We're not talking about some, we're all talking about some of the Upper West Side has some extra inventory that has not been selling well because they they built it maybe in a location that was you know block by block, not the perfect location. And they're priced too high because pricing is everything. But that is the product right now that's there. And what's coming is not that much because it, it doesn't make sense to build. Yeah. So we're going to have, in about three years, 2025, 2026, there will be a severe inventory shortage, We, yeah. as far as new product is concerned. Right now, we're not living that as much, yeah, but, it's, but it's that. still very neighborhood by neighborhood. Um, you know, the Upper East Side is going to see another couple of projects that will come online that are going to do very, very well because it's a, it's a great neighborhood that has also maintained its integrity in spite of what's gone in New York City. If you can hear, if you can understand my veil. Well, if you, if you understand my veil. Read between the lines. <laughs> You can give us a call and we'll tell you what that is. If you so, can't yeah, pick exactly. up on that. Exactly. It's still nice up there. And um, and the same with the West Village. You know, there's a project that they're talking about at some of these prices, these super, super prices that they're going to bring on. That's a West Village, you know, high rise. Um, that's going to be, they're going to really be pushing pricing there as well. So we're seeing, it really depends on the product. But right now, the product that is built and ready to sell, those developers, for the most part, are ready to do deals. And how do you see as we go through into 2024? Are you bullish or bearish about 2024? Are you thinking I'm so? bullish. I'm bullish in 2024 because of the fact that I believe that there will be rates will come down a bit, and I at some point they won't come down enough. I think we'll be here for a little while, but they'll probably scooch down a little bit. People will continue to get used to rates where they are. They will get sick of where they are. There will be pent up demand again, and then we will see things pick up significantly. I do also think there will be a flurry of activity before the end of the year. I think we're seeing it now begin and I think we have another we'll have another four weeks to six weeks of people, of buyers out there ready to kind of get things done before the end of the year. I think we're in a seasonal environment. I think we're in, a, in an environment where people truly take holidays, where they leave and they, they disconnect, um, which I feel like we didn't see before COVID. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm always also positive because I always outperform the market. I underperform a great market and I always outperform a bad market. And that's why you're a top producer. It keeps things stable, right? So give us a story because as you, you do all these transactions, Give us an example that really encapsulates and summarizes 
kind of what 2023 has been like for you? We were talking about this before, and I'm trying to think of what story makes the most sense because I feel like I've had such crazy, we've had some really, really crazy stories, but one that's a really positive one because let, if we want to just yeah, go let's, with let's, it, let's, let's, let's be just nice. go positive. So I have a developer who actually, they're not developers, they're a group of men who 10 years ago decided that they were going to buy a building. I'm not going to say the location, but they were going to buy a building and they were going to tear it down and they were going to make a bunch of condos for themselves. They decided to build a, a small, under, under, under 10 unit condominium building with just a few units. Each of them got a unit, a couple of them got, one of them got two units. And it took them, because of the fact that they're not developers, 10 years to build this wow, four unit building. Wow, 10 years, building. that's a long time. It's a long time. Um, no banks were involved, um, but there were, there were, you know, unsavory contractors and they probably got taken advantage of because in New York City, that's what happens. You get taken advantage of. That's how it works. Never happens in Miami. No, never? <laughs> okay, good. But I'm, I'm glad I should move you no, in Florida. No, I'm joking. It happens all the time. So, so they, exactly. So they could probably get taken advantage of. However, we were able to get one of the, prop, we were able to get the penthouse to be at the right price at the right time. And it was a moment when we thought this year, we, we thought to ourselves, I don't really know what will happen. It was, um, it was in the springtime and we were worried that, hey, this is at the right price. Are they going to take away the listing? We couldn't get anybody through the property. We weren't getting that many showings, no interest. And then literally out of nowhere, we had two full priced offers out of absolute nowhere. That was a surprise? It was a, it was a real surprise. It was a real surprise to everybody. I have no idea how this property traded for what we sold it for. Absolutely no idea. For some reason, at one moment, these buyers just came out of thin air. They both wanted they it. They both wanted it. One of them was probably not as real as the other one. We were lucky and we went to contract with the one who was real yeah, and closed and closed. And we were able to get, and it was right around, there was something crazy that happened. When did the banks go under? Uh, what month was, it, was that? The banks on uh, when, uh, when First Republic. Yeah, when First Republic. Uh, it's like March, April. Exactly. Time, so it was, in the, it was when the banks went under. We were and we were worried because the buyer had no financing contingency, but was with First Republic. And First Republic was was First Republic was really good at giving loans to people that were on buildings that maybe they shouldn't have loaned money oh, to. That is right place, right time. And so we were really in the right place at the right time. We closed. The seller was going to fire us if we hadn't done this. Like they, there was nothing we could have done. I still am incredibly happy that we were able to get the deal done. And I will tell you that for very unique product, especially in New York City, for very unique product in certain neighborhoods, this was in the East Village and sometimes in other neighborhoods, you can find an outlier. And buyers will fall in love with something because it's very special. And these men who had built this building, they had done every unit with different finishes. So this penthouse was like super one of a kind and so the buyer was actually really excited about that and ended up buying it but i would say that's been 2023 it's been like you're in italian they say when you're scared they make this little hand gesture mm -hmm. which i'll just leave it leave it at that and you can be really scared and wonder if you're going to sell anything and then all of a sudden something will come out that of thin happens. air and that's kind of what it feels like 2023 has been that kind of a roller coaster for us where you, you you know you're ready to get fired you're ready to get your head handed to you you prepare the 10th marketing plan for these people of what you're going to do next with the coasters and the bars around the corner that have the property you know QR code on it, whatever the hell you're going to do. And then just before they like chop your head off, you get an offer you and somehow it. you get the deal done. Yeah. And I feel like that's happened for us more than I'd like to admit this year. And obviously I feel like when we get into these conversations with New York and Miami, have you seen any migratory aspects, people moving into yeah. the suburbs, people like staying in Manhattan, or is it you, you seeing some of that movement going on? We're definitely still seeing people move to the suburbs, absolutely, especially families. I think New York City, there's a point when people just feel like it's difficult to justify the cost of living in New York City for the quality of life. I mean, that's just the way that it is. You have to truly be a New Yorker that's such a diehard New Yorker to stay yeah. and live in New York. There are enough diehard New Yorkers still living in New York that it's still a bustling amazing place and it's still difficult to get a reservation at the best restaurants yeah. and there's still beautiful people um it's just it's just a, it's just different it's just different than it was yeah change uh, we, we reflect on this on other podcasts the one certainty in life is change yeah. change is a certainty it will come that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be scared of it it's just going to happen every city will adapt and adjust the center of the western world for a long time was amsterdam then it was london it's new york yeah. things move and change doesn't mean they go away they just change I wanted to finish off with what's a bit of fun, and it's oh. quick fire questions. Because I was, was going to ask if Miami is the new center of the world. 
I don't know if I should answer that question. It's certainly... <laughs> or is Palm Beach, which is where we are right now. <laughs> no, Miami. Miami certainly at moments feels like oh, it's, it's moved in a whole new direction that it never had before. And it's been, fortunately, the, reciproc the, the receiving uh, city for so many buyers for so many different reasons. And again, uh, we have to go into that quality of life. People can go out there, but if they want to explore, go online and see what we produce. Um, but I certainly feel that Miami right now has grown up. Yeah. It's, it's gone through a puberty phase when it was a little naughty. Now it's really grown up and it's moving forward. Um, but thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, it does feel like that sometimes. I'm not going to lie. A little lie. bit. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to fire some quick-fire questions at sure. you. Okay. There's no right or wrong answer here. Right. Okay, right, this is all right. fine. But I'm, I'm doing it off the cuff because I, I wanted to see like the, the natural reaction, the organic okay, reaction. Okay, I don't good. want you to think too hard about this. I won't think very hard, don't worry. Good. Okay, here There's we go. no hard thinking. Like, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's, 10 quick questions. Okay. Kitchens or closets? Closets. Emotional or analytical? Emotional. AI useful or misdirection? Misdirection for right now. Condos or homes? Condos. Seller's market or buyer's market? Buyers. Google or Instagram? Instagram. Better 23 or tw better 24? 24. I love the positivity. Renovate or buy new? Renovate. Bravo or Bloomberg? Bravo. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> I'm going to use a poker analogy. And thinking about the strength of your markets at hand, you're at a poker table with California, New York, Boston, and Miami, and betting on your success for next year. My question is, raise, hold, or fold? For New York? Yep. Um, hold. If you know what, want to know what that means, give me a call. <laughs> Kirsten, thank you so much thank for Thank you this. for having me, this is super really fun. Thank you for this, um, <laughs> and we're gonna follow up with more guests.